help me welcome United States Senate candidate and representative from Jefferson Parish, Paul Hollis. Thank you all, I really appreciate it. Let me just start off by asking the question, are you all ready to defeat Mary Landrew? Yeah. I am too, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be amongst the first to welcome you to this great city of New Orleans and to the state that I'm so proud to call my home. Welcome to the state of Louisiana. It's wonderful for me to be amongst so many conservatives from across the nation. And I'm honored to share with you a little bit about myself and why I'm running for the United States Senate. You know, like so many of you in this room tonight, I share great concerns about the direction of our country. I think we have all witnessed a massive expansion of the federal government like we have never seen before. It's unprecedented and it's breathtaking. Meanwhile, Louisiana's seen our U.S. Senator that's supposed to represent our state continue to vote for bigger government. I've watched this happen and it's been frustrating to me. But I'm convinced that Louisiana is ready for a new United States Senator. And I'm also convinced the way this person is going to defeat an entrenched incumbent of 18 years is by being the polar opposite of her. In fact, it's interesting because the best way for me to share a little bit about myself is by comparing and contrasting myself to Senator Mary Landrieu. No two individuals could be more different than she and I, and I'll give you some examples. Mary Landrieu was born in Arlington, Virginia, inside the Washington, D.C. Beltway. Folks, I was born here in Louisiana. It's interesting because of all the Senate candidates, there's only one individual actually born and raised in Louisiana, and I'm that individual. Another contrast that exists, Senator Landrieu was raised by a liberal Democrat family. By contrast, I was raised by a strong, principled, conservative Republican family. In fact, for those of you that follow Louisiana politics to the early 1980s, you might remember in our state Senate, politics then was different than it is today. The landscape of Louisiana politically was different. In order for you to get elected to anything, you had to be a Democrat. If you were a Republican, you couldn't get elected. Fortunately, today it's the total opposite. But in the early 1980s, in our state Senate, out of 39 members, there was one Republican that stood alone. You might wonder, why do I remember that? I remember that because that man was my father. I grew up learning and watching the importance of integrity, hard work, principle. I saw it all of my life. I'm fortunate I didn't have to look far to find my heroes. They were my parents, and I got to see it every single day. And folks, let me tell you, where I was born and how I was raised, that's probably the smallest contrast that I can offer you. The biggest contrast that I can offer you when you think about this, it was 1979 when Mary Landrieu first got into elected office. Folks, if you do the math, that was 35 years ago. 35 years ago, she has served on the public payroll, having zero experience in the private sector. Folks, the contrast that I offer is I worked my way through LSU. I started my own business when I was only 19 years old. When I graduated from college, I started my own business. And in the process of creating my own business and growing my business, I continue to see all the numerous challenges that government puts on small business. At a time when government needs to do anything, they need to get out of the way because we need to get this economy going again. Mary Landrieu votes for bigger government, higher taxes, bloated bureaucracy, and I fight that in the Louisiana legislature. While she does what she does in Washington, D.C., I'm in Louisiana fighting for smaller government, for less taxes, working hard to fight the ravages of Obamacare. From a federal perspective, folks, I got to tell you, I think it's simple what America needs to do. We need to return to our founding principles. We need to return to smaller government, to less taxes, 
Folks, I'm going to be specific. We need a balanced budget amendment. The, the fact that our nation owes $17.5 trillion and we continue to spend trillions of dollars that we do not have to leave that kind of burden to our children and to our grandchildren, folks, it's not just wrong, it's immoral and it needs to stop. The states balance their budget. More importantly, the Louisiana families balance their budget every single day. And for the federal government to operate any different makes no sense whatsoever. Number two, we need to term limit Congress. I do not believe the Founding Fathers ever intended for folks to serve decade after decade after decade. I think the idea was for people to bring their life experience to public service, to bring their ideas and their ideals to office, to serve, and then in time, go home and let somebody else do it. Number three, Congress needs to live under the same laws as the American people. Period. Anything different than that, folks, is just wrong. You know, let me share this. Making a decision to run for an office as lofty as the United States Senate, it's not something that I've taken lightly. My wife and I, we have two small children. I have a 10-year-old daughter and I have a one-year-old son. I want nothing more than for them to be able to stay in Louisiana and hopefully one day I'll have grandkids 30, 40 years from now. I want them to stay in our state forever. <laughs> But I gotta say, 20 years ago when I graduated from LSU, oh, yeah. the political landscape then was different than it is today. And unfortunately, our state was in bad shape. So many of my friends graduated from college. They wanted to stay in Louisiana, but they couldn't because there were no jobs. I personally experienced so many of my friends calling me saying, Paul, we have to leave this state to find a job elsewhere. And that burned into my soul, and I remember it. And I'm proud to be a part of our state legislature, to have an impact, to move Louisiana forward. And I'm here to tell you that Louisiana's in better shape than ever before. And I couldn't be more confident about Louisiana's future. The only thing that tempers my future for our state is what I see coming out of Washington, D.C. I know that Louisiana is looking for a fighter to go to D.C. and represent Louisiana. And I'm looking forward to being that individual. And let me close by sharing with you all my gratitude to everybody in this room. As I look out into your eyes, I look out into your hearts, folks, you give me confidence. You give me confidence for so many different reasons. You give me confidence to know that even though our nation is facing tough challenges, America's best days, they're still ahead. You give me confidence to know that later this year, the United States is going to elect more than the essential six seats in the United States Senate to retire Harry Reid. Folks, you give me confidence to know that Louisiana is going to speak strong and they're going to speak loudly. And come December, we're going to retire Mary Landrew. And finally, folks, I got to tell you the thing that gives me more confidence than anything else that I've said is that in 2016, you give me the confidence to know that we're going to elect a new president that's actually competent, and we're going to get America going again. Thank you. Thank you all very much.